On the 17th of February, 1854, two fishermen in Dusseldorf watched in astonishment as a man hurled himself from a bridge into the Rhine. They hastily rowed after him and managed to drag him onto their boat, but the man struggled with them, attempting to throw himself back into the river. Eventually, the fisherman managed to get him back to the shore. The man was Robert Schumann, and in little over a year, he would starve to death. This music is the Ghost Variations, the music Schumann was composing just before his suicide attempt. Schumann was convinced he had heard the main theme from Angels. What he didn't realise, that he had written the theme himself years earlier, and had used it several times, including a few months before in his violin concerto. Robert Schumann had suffered depressed episodes all his life, but from the 1840s he started to suffer hearing issues. It was the note A that bothered him and would continue to bother him all his life. However, his tinnitus presently started to develop into full-blown audio hallucinations. He confided to his wife, the pianist and composer, Clara Schumann, It's as if the walls and everything around me are full of notes that resound in my ears day and night without respite. Sometimes they are dissonant and unbearable and I cannot escape them. Clara confided to her diary, Throughout the night, Robert had such terrible sounds in his ears that he couldn't sleep a minute. Every sound he hears turns to music. Music played on glorious sounding instruments, he says, more beautiful than any music ever heard on earth. It utterly exhausts him. For a composer, the audio nature of his hallucinations must have been particularly distressing. One day he heard the music of Schubert. The next, full orchestral works tormented him from beginning to end. A week later, Clara wrote, He hears music constantly, and it torments him day and night. Sometimes he believes that he's hearing the music of angels, and at other times he is convinced that he's hearing his own compositions played by others. He is increasingly confused and disoriented, and it's heartbreaking to watch him struggle. Things rapidly got worse as Robert started to experience full-blown hallucinations. The angels turned into devils, that sang horrible music. He would scream in agony that they were pouncing on him like tigers, seizing him in their claws. Clara was also suffering. She was five months pregnant with their eighth child. A friend wrote he had never seen her fall so full of suffering. She just sits on the bed and listens for his every movement. Schumann had been terrified of going mad all his life, and now it was actually happening, and it brought a new and awful idea, that he was going to harm Clara. This was the point a terrified Schumann threw himself into the Rhine. A week later, he admitted himself to the mental hospital in Endeny. It was to be his final home. At the hospital, his mental behaviour was disintegrating. A hospital log from May 1854 reports, Yesterday, Schumann was continually agitated, talking drivel loudly and rapidly. Afterwards, he played the piano in a wild and crazy manner for almost two hours, hollering all the while. Care at the asylum was considered progressive for its time. Schumann's doctor thought patients should be removed from associations of their mental stress, and therefore Clara was told she shouldn't visit her husband. For months, Clara was kept away, but after appealing to the local authorities, she was finally allowed to visit him months later in September. She was shocked at the transformation. He was lying in bed, half propped up with pillows, and his eyes had a strange, fixed look. Robert didn't seem to recognise her. An entry from September the 8th shows the extent of Schumann's deterioration. Robert is now almost completely unable to communicate with us. He spends most of his time lying in bed, staring blankly at the ceiling or at the walls, and he often becomes agitated or fearful for no apparent reason. He still hears music constantly, but it seems to be a source of great distress for him. It is heartbreaking to see him suffer like this, and I can only hope that he will find some peace soon. At her final meeting, he just muttered some disconnected words. She fed him some jelly and wine, which he licked from her fingers. The next day, he died. 
Clara confessed to her diary. I am grateful that he is no longer suffering, but I cannot help feeling a profound sense of loss and sadness. He was my partner, my soulmate, my everything, and now he is gone. I will miss him more than words can express. Schumann's autopsy revealed a physically deteriorated brain that weighed seven ounces less than usual. The official cause of death was starvation, but that was likely a side effect of late stage syphilis. There's still doubt and controversy on the subject, but if the disease had infected his brain and nervous system, that could lead to hallucinations, delusions, and even, eventually, the inability to swallow. There's also thinking that Schumann might have been poisoned by mercury or arsenic used at the time to treat syphilis. And, on top of everything, Schumann almost certainly suffered bipolar disorder. He had experienced manic depressive episodes constantly during his life, composing at high intensity at times and then relapsing into deep depression. Schumann's work, I think, demonstrates this with its love of episodic constructions and fantasy, those small characteristic quirks of rhythm and internal counterpoint, and perhaps a weakness with dealing with longer format works. But as his disease progressed, his compositions became more disattached and odd. The music frightened Clara. She destroyed much of it after his death, and she even tried to suppress these ghost variations. Even so, it's worth remembering how terrible the situation must have been for everyone concerned. If Schumann was suffering the mental effects of late-stage syphilis, on top of a bipolar disorder, on top of mercury or arsenic poisoning, then he was experiencing something that medicine itself doesn't know a great deal about. It must have been a dreadful experience, not just for Schumann, but for those closest to him. Clara was no doubt right that a merciful death had ended the suffering. 